Greetings and welcome to TFI. It's about time I didn't invent a video, in it? <laughs> so I've got another rant video lined up, so I thought I'd best break it up with some actual inventor stuff. I'm surprised I've not done this one yet, actually. It's Pack and Go! What? What? Uh, right, Pack and Go is the, the function of taking an invented design and being able to effectively share it with somebody without missing any bits. Being able to send an assembly, which don't forget with the, with Inventor and any other 3D program, it's not just one file. You know, if you send someone just the assembly, then they need all these bits here to be able to open up the assembly properly. The assembly is full of dozens, potentially hundreds, as in this case is 530 parts in here. So Pack and Go will collect everything in your assembly, bung it into a folder, and then uh, and then send it off to whoever you want to send it off to. And if you're thinking to yourself, well. I still don't see the problem. I don't see why this is useful. Can't I just send them the folder that the... Well, the thing is, something like this, and many, many real-life designs, they tend to be scattered, your files, around many different folders, right? So the top-level assembly is in this folder here. Which one is it? It's uh, 1175, that one there. So all of these here just aren't required. And then you might have some parts in here. You might have some parts in here, but not all of them. And then you've also got your libraries folder, which is your content center, nuts and bolts and washers and rivets and pins and stuff. So... Grabbing the files you need from folders which are full of other files that you don't need, it's very time consuming, it's possible, but it's very, very, very time consuming. So Pack and Go will solve the problem, right? The way you do Pack and Go, and it is dead easy, it is really easy, this shouldn't take too long. All you do, right, there's two ways of doing it. The, the, the first and the most easiest way, I guess, is to just open the assembly that you want to share, click File, hover over Save As, and then select Pack and Go and you get this pack and go dialog box. The other way of doing it is if you open up Windows Explorer and then go to your assembly that you want to share, uh, which is this one here, you can right click and then on the right click menu, providing that invent has been able to inject itself into the Windows shell and the right click menus, you should have pack and go in the right click menu and that brings up the same dialog box, but it's easier, I suppose, if you do it in product. Uh, it's uh, more efficient to do it that way, I guess, and safer. Uh, I don't know why, it just in my head, it just feels like it would be. So you've got to say where you're going to send this to, right? The destination folder is where it's going to take the files from, because Pack and Go is a copy. It copies the files from where they are now into this destination folder. So let's create a folder on the desktop called Shared, right? That folder doesn't exist now. In fact, no, let's, let's call this Car Design, right? Because it's a car chassis, so let's put Car Design. And you've got a whole bunch of options, right? Options, copy to a single path. If you tick copy to a single path, it's going to take all of the files and it's going to put them all under this one folder without any subfolders. It's just a flat list of files. Or you can choose to keep the folder hierarchy, which means that it's going to create this folder, card design. It's going to put all of your assemblies and parts into the card design folder, but retain the folders that they're in now. So chassis CH and bodywork BW, that kind of thing. It'll keep all of those folders. Why would you do that? Well, if you're going to be sending an assembly to somebody for them to work on and then send you it back, you want to try and keep that folder structure so you're not having to constantly move files back and forwards into folders. Sometimes if you're just, for example, here's another example of where you'd use pack and go. You're taking an assembly onto a laptop, for example, uh, or you're giving it to somebody on a laptop uh, just for them to open up in a sales meeting or a design review or something like that. You, it's a one-off use, that's it. You can put everything into a single path flat folder and then they've got everything they need in one folder and it's just there it's it's tidy neat and tidy all in one folder they can just open up the top level assembly and then once they're finished with it they can just delete that one folder and be done with it so there's up there's there's reasons why you go for one or the other but normally i would go for keep folder hierarchy model files only or include linked files right well this is for when you've got things like uh, images and attachments and various other you know maybe fea files i don't know what the exact extent of linked files is but if you want to make sure that you collect absolutely everything that you've linked to any file that you've got in this data set then tick this or if you just want model files just the 3d files that's it then you can just select model files only in fact that might even exclude the drones you know, if, if a couple of these parts have got IDWs, then include link files might grab the drawings as well, whereas that doesn't uh, possibly. But it's it's pretty black and white. If you want absolutely everything, you go for that one. If you just want the model, you go for that one. It's pretty black and white when it comes to it. Uh, right, the other options down here. Never click skip libraries ever. The, I cannot think of a single good reason why you would do that. The libraries are your nuts and bolts. If you untick that, 
then whoever's going to receive your assembly, it's going to be broken because it's going to be missing the library files. And the library files typically are the files which are in the folder called libraries. Things like, you know, your nuts and bolts, all this sort of stuff. If you don't give someone that, then it's going to be missing bits. And when they open up the assembly, it's going to be file link errors and whatnot. So never tick that unless you've got a good reason to. Collect work groups. I've, to be honest, cards on the table. Not a clue what this does. It sounds like a legacy setting from years ago. By all means, if there's some smarty pants in the comments that knows what that does, by all means, let everybody know. But as far as I'm aware, it's not relevant uh, in this day and age. Right, skip styles and skip templates. I always take these two. Your styles is your design data folder. It's the collection of files and XML data which defines your layer settings, your materials, everything to do with your drawing setup, your standards, that kind of thing. Most cases, whoever's receiving your design doesn't need that because nowadays Inventor caches pretty much every style it needs into the local documents. So you very rarely, if ever, need to give somebody your styles so you can skip those. And the same goes for your templates. Your templates are the uh, your starting blocks for new files. You know, Unless you're giving somebody this design for them to create more designs of the same type and your templates are you know, customized, include materials and various other bits and pieces and unit settings and whatever, to, to suit and to match the, the model that you're giving them. Again, I can't think of a single reason why you'd want to include the templates in your pack and go, but that's what that does. That will include the templates in your pack and go uh, folder when it's all done. You can also take packages as zip. Now, when you click packages as zip, it will still dump the files into this folder here, but it will also zip them up as well. Not either or, it'll do it as well. Uh, so it just saves you having to do it. There's nothing stopping you doing it afterwards anyway. Manually, it's just saving you a couple of clicks. Uh, on the right-hand side, find referenced files. Right, this is where the magic happens. Because at the moment, we've just configured some options. Inventor doesn't know yet what it's got to package up. So what you've got to do, is first off, is make sure you've got the correct project file ticked or selected. And most of the, most of the time, that's going to be right anyway. It's going to use the project file you've got active in Inventor which in most cases is going to be the correct project file for the design that you're sharing because you've already got it open to go, to go file, save as, and pack and go with. So you click search now. That now looks through everything. It looks through your design. It looks through all the folders, and it makes sure that it can get everything that it needs, and that, then it confirms total files. There's 530 files, which should match up with that number down there at the bottom right-hand side, providing that you've only got one thing open. If you've got more than one thing open, then that number there won't match that number there, but that's just a good visual verification disk space required this number here is um it's very useful to see this actually so pat on the back to autodesk for including this this is just a heads up to you for how big the package is going to be ladies it's uh it's 409 megabytes so immediately you know that this is too big to email even zipped it ain't going to be anywhere near a size to email so now that you know it's 409 megabytes before you've even started the pack and go you're going to have to consider maybe cloud sharing that kind of thing you know online storage to get the uh, the data set over to the to the destination, uh, so that's just uh, you can't do anything with it. Obviously, disk space required it is what it is, right? And that's it. That's it. You've got some options at the bottom for searching for reference files, but uh, that's pretty much everything that it's going to collate and grab. You can just pretty much look through it and go, yep, 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 yep. That looks right. If you need to exclude certain files, you can untick them. So if there's any sensitive files in there that you think, well, actually, I know for a fact they shouldn't need that, well, yes, you can delete them after you've done the pack and go, or you can exclude them at this point. But this is just a list of files found. And then that's it. Click Start. It'll say the folder doesn't exist, card design. Do you want to create it? Well, obviously, mate. Yeah, kind of goes without saying. Uh, it'll go and grab all the files and then put them in that folder and it's done it within you know a good five to ten seconds that's pretty pretty quick and there we go so there's our card design zip file i actually thought it did create the folder as well when i practiced with this yesterday i, I must have just had the folder already and thought it did it at the same time but it mustn't have done uh, but there's your zip file so by taking packages as zip it's actually either or it's not both of them fine that's a correction that's not a problem so there's your zip file right if i extract this so we can see what contents we're going to be sending to somebody there's the contents 
uh, it gives them the project file, which actually it's a, it's a custom project file unique to this data set. So the recipient needs to load in that project file and that project file will point their inventor to this workspace. And there's all the files required to open up this assembly. There's the top level. And there was actually three other assemblies in that same folder, which, uh, which it needed. And there's loads of files scattered all over the place. I mean, look how many files there are in various different folders needed by that one assembly. So that's why pack and go is useful. Same goes for the libraries. And if we go into the content center files, you can see there's like a half dozen folders there with nuts and bolts and bits and pieces. So pack and go, pretty good, pretty good. The zip file, well, it was 409 megabytes in total. The zip file is down to 173 megabytes, which it's still, you can't email that, but good compression ratio on that either way. Not that Autodesk can take credit for that. That's the zip, I suppose, uh, but that will have to be shared using cloud storage. Right then, that's it. That's pack and go. <laughs> there's, there's nothing more to it than that. Once you've pack and goed it and the zip file exists, there's no link back to the original models. There's no way of, you know, checking the updates that the other person's done and integrating that with your data set that you've, uh, that, that you've sent out. That's not what it's for. It would be nice. That's something that they can maybe work on in the future, but that's way and beyond the scope of what Inventor is designed for. Uh, but anyway, thanks very much, guys. That's it for this video. If you liked it, Hit the like button and I'll and I'll see you in the next one. Cheery bye. Joke. Toodles.